Some background. I, 25 female, left my ex, 32 male, back when I was pregnant due to the traumatic aggression he put me through. He and I hardly spoke, and when our son was born, he did not come to see him. He denied being the father and had everyone in his town believe I was an S who banged everyone. When paternity test came back as 99.99998%, he handed me custody with no fight. I remember watching his new girlfriend storm out of the courtroom when the results were announced. He attended visitation for a few weeks, then suddenly stopped. Few years passed. I moved and started attending college while he still lives with his parents. In July 2020, our son turned five. My ex had been invited to every birthday celebration and never showed, never called, never sent a gift. Just an hour after my son's birthday party, I was scrolling Facebook and happened to see my ex's mother had posted a congratulations to her son, who had gotten married earlier that day. My ex never called to wish my son a happy birthday, never sent a text, gift, or card, but had the time to get married on the one day of the year where I feel he should be spending his time with his child. I took screenshots of the post, every comment, every picture, and posted it on my timeline calling my ex out for being a deadbeat, not worthy of being called a father. His mother and some of his family came to try and defend him. So many of my friends and family, and even strangers, came to my aid and wrote about what a piece of crap he is. My fiancé had said, I've known this child for three years, and not once has his so-called father ever been there or been involved. Now, almost on a weekly basis, I have his family message me telling me I'm an a-hole, piece of crap, how my son will be ashamed of what I have said about his father when he grows up, and how I'm somehow the reason my son has no father. Am I the a-hole? Being obsessed with his whereabouts and lack of interest in your son does nothing for your son. Everyone sucks here. Move on. Your son does not need his mother to be bitter, vindictive, and immature. Don't play yourself and pretend that you did that for him. He does not have a father. Your Facebook tantrum did not fix that. Nothing will. I disagree with this. I had an absent father, and I wish that someone, anyone, called him out publicly even once. As it happened, he got married on my birthday too. It does do something for children to know that someone had their back, and she is entitled to feel anger and sadness for her child, who may not get it now, but they will every single birthday when they are old enough to realize their parent cared so little about them, they scheduled a wedding on their birthday. Trust me, I know. Not the a-hole. Everyone sucks here. It sounds like he has zero interest, so why would you want that for your child? And if he was aggressive towards you, even more so, your behavior sounds like you are angry at him, and this has more to do with your feelings than what is best for your child. Maybe spend some time working through your own feelings of hurt, rejection, shame, loss, or whatever is going on there. Walk away from the drama rather than adding to it with social media posts which are never going to have any positive effect. Otherwise, you have a future of bitterness and negativity, which you will share with your child. Sounds like they will only have one parent who cares, so maybe try to be the best one you can be. I, 41 male, have been married to Jane, 37 female, for about 10 years now. We both have two kids from previous relationships. I have Tim, 19 male, and Harry, 14 male, while she has Eve, 18 female, and Matt, 14 male. About half a year ago, my father died and left his house to us, which we moved into selling our old house. When we moved in, Jane began asking that I put her name on the house as well, which I refused since before we got married we agreed to have separate finances. Jane didn't like this and started acting out at home, not helping out, leaving the house for hours at a time and not responding to my texts or calls. When I asked her why she's doing this, she said it's not her house so she shouldn't have to help out. This didn't help out my relationship with her daughter, who's never really liked me, in contrast to her brother who adores me and is best friends with Harry. She often shouts that I'm not her dad so I should leave her alone, which is hurtful, but I just let it go. But it got to the point that one day, Jane, Eve, and myself got into an argument, and out of spite, I wrote Eve out of my will. If she wasn't going to see me as a father, then she wasn't entitled to my money. A few weeks ago, Eve had a festival and asked to use my car to go. I told her no, as I'd have to take the car to work. She said why I didn't just take Uber, and I said that I had all my students' assignments and other materials in my car, so it's like a convenient storage. She went in a mood and went to her room. Come the day before the festival and I wake up to go to work and my car isn't there. I had to call in sick to work and called everyone to find out where my car had went. I called the police to report a stolen vehicle 
and a few hours later, I get an angry call from Jane shouting at me for getting Eve arrested. It turns out that Eve and her friends broke into my car that night before and took it so they could go to the festival. When they got home from the station, they went off on me and started accusing me of hating Eve and wanting her to suffer in jail. I just went to sleep because I was already too stressed out for the day. Come the next morning, I find out that Jane had gone through my folders and seen my will and told Eve. Eve smashed her brother Matt's gaming PC that I had bought for him saying that he doesn't deserve anything from that monster. When I found out, I was livid. Her mother tried to defend her and I wasn't having any of it and I just ended up kicking Eve out of my house. Jane shouted at me, saying how could I do that to her and that I'm a selfish monster. I didn't care. I just let her talk to Eve while I packed her things. Jane has been sleeping in Eve's room now. She goes to work, orders takeaway for herself, and just stays in the room. I sometimes overhear her talking trash about me on the phone. Eve has been staying with her aunt on the other side of the city. I feel bad since I just wanted to give the kids a real family, and now I've just gone and ruined it for them. So, am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole, but Eve isn't the main issue. Your wife is. Provided that you split the money from the house you two had before you moved into your father's house, there's no real issue there, since you already had separate finances. Jane's response was immature and gave Eve tactic permission to act out. She then egged her on more by sharing your will. Eve stole your car. You had every right to call the police. She also destroyed her brother's PC out of spite. Family therapy if you want to save this sinking, sunken ship. You're also not blameless, as it's awfully petty to write someone out of your will out of spite, rather than to try to work on the relationship. Not the a-hole. You should have kicked all of them out. Would be really sad for your stepson as you have a great relationship with him, but your wife and your stepdaughter is just terrible entitled people. Not the a-hole for kicking her out, but you have a wife problem, not a stepdaughter problem. Your wife's name wasn't on the old place, so it makes sense it isn't on the new one. But this is something that needed to be ironed out because no one likes to feel that the home they are living in isn't theirs, or if they would be out on the street with no recourse should you separate. But all of this is kind of unimportant, because I don't see how you come back from this. So, my brother died recently of cancer, and his funeral's coming up. Here's the problem. He explicitly said that he did not want his ex-wife of 18 years to come to his funeral, and most of my family believes we should honor that. When she found out, she was very upset, and my nieces and nephews practically begged me to let her. So, in that moment, I said yes, because I felt bad. Now, my brother, sisters, and mother are all mad at me for telling her she could come and want me to fix it and tell her she can't. My mother especially blames her for having a negative impact on his health with the stress of the divorce, though she filed for divorce before his cancer diagnosis. I feel very conflicted here. On one hand, I understand that they did not end on the best of terms and my brother's wishes should be honored. But on the other hand, I believe it's likely he was just hurt when he said that and really would have wanted her there. They were married for nearly 20 years, and together overall for 22 years, yet only officially divorced for two weeks before his death. I struggle to believe that love just completely disappeared, even with the divorce and bitterness, for him to really mean what he said. Edit. Since many have been asking, the nieces and nephews are their three kids together, 15, 18, and 20. Am I the a-hole for letting my brother's ex-wife come to his funeral? No a-holes. I understand that you should respect the wishes of the departed, but the kids need their mom right now. Good on you, OP. Yes, the a-hole. From what I am gathering, they had a pretty messy divorce. Respect his last wishes. Yes, the a-hole. There is no discussion. He made his decision very clear. You trying to rationalize your betrayal by pretending you don't believe the love was gone is BS, and you know it. Yeah, you know for a fact he hated her guts. Major stress during cancer treatment is like trying to put out a fire while you add gasoline on the other side. There is absolutely a real chance that what she did contributed to his death. This is a disgusting betrayal if you follow through with it. Not the a-hole, but this situation should have been completely up to his kids. Two are adults, and they are the next of kin. If they want their mother with them at their father's funeral, absolutely nobody should feel the right to come between that. Update. I think I will stand by my decision, but unfortunately my mom called me for an update and I told her it's up to his kids who they want there. Now she's threatening to embarrass her in front of everyone if she steps foot in the church. It's so ridiculous and childish, but knowing my mom and how she is, I sadly wouldn't doubt this. 
So I say the ex-wife is allowed to come, but it's now up to her if she wants to put herself through a very likely clash with my mom. Update 2. Funeral went well. His ex-wife came and gave their kids the support they needed. Despite some dirty looks and sighs, my mother surprisingly managed to control herself after I warned her that a confrontation could affect her relationship with her grandkids. Everyone else was too busy grieving to deal with the drama, it seemed. So, looks like I made the right decision. I, female 24, work an office job. I have a co-worker, Anne, female 28. Anne is currently pregnant and is around six months pregnant. We have a dedicated break room where we go for lunch as we aren't allowed to eat anything or drink anything except water bottles in the office because of the computers. We all have our own break schedules that are the same every day. Ann and I go to lunch together. Our lunch break is from 13.30 to 14.30. No one else is on this schedule and take their breaks earlier or later. In the break room, there's a few chairs and a couple of couches. Over the past two weeks, Ann had started taking naps on one of the couches during her lunch break. I know it's not my business as to what she does on her break, she can do what she wants. Last Friday, Anne and I were taking our breaks as usual. I was listening to music on my headphones, and when it was around 14.30, I got up to go back to work. I didn't really pay attention to what Anne was doing. Everyone was confused and was saying, where's Anne, by around 1500, because they needed her, and our boss went into the break room and Anne was still sleeping. Anne got a warning from our boss. Anne is now angry with me because our breaks end at the same time, so I should have woken her up. She said I'm selfish and careless. A lot of our other co-workers are on Anne's side and agree. I told Anne if she can't wake up, she shouldn't sleep during her break. She said the baby makes her tired and accused me of calling her lazy and being insensitive. Edit to add on. When my break was ending, I was scrolling on my phone and listening to music. I have ADHD. When I do these things, I'm quite oblivious to my surroundings. I didn't not wake Anne up because of malice. If Anne had asked me to wake her up, I would have done so. Not the a-hole. She's an adult. Sure, it would have been nice of you to wake her up, but you didn't, which is perfectly fine. What if you woke her and she was upset with you? It would be the same situation. She would be upset and some co-workers would be on her side, and you would be questioning your decision. Sort of lose-lose in my opinion. Not the a-hole. If she needed help, she could have asked you. Lots of people I work with nap on their lunch break, and they all manage to set an alarm on their phones and make it back to work on time. She's not automatically your responsibility just because you go on break at the same time. Yes, the a-hole, because you're not a team player. I get that you don't have any obligation to this woman, but as a co-worker, she is still one of your team members. If you want a workplace with the I've got mine and screw you if you didn't get yours mentality, it seems like you'll be on your way at this place. While I would recognize that it is the pregnant co-worker's obligation to wake herself up, I'd also recognize that you're not a good co-worker, and I would distance myself from you. Christmas Eve, my wife, Sarah, and I hosted my mother-in-law, Jane, and father-in-law, Robert. Sarah and I are in our 40s, and the in-laws are near 70. Every time we have them over, I have to remind Robert not to feed our dog table scraps. We don't want to promote begging. We're trying to keep her weight healthy, and the dog has some allergies which require expensive shots. Each time I have to remind Robert not to feed the dog from the table, he laughs and stops. Christmas Eve. I catch him again. I ask him like usual. He laughs. Some 20 minutes later, I see him sneak a piece of chicken off his plate. We do not feed the dog chicken at all because we think that is one of her allergy triggers. I tell him again. I explain about the allergies, and he plays dumb with a smirk on his face. I am not happy. I leave to help my Sarah in the kitchen clean up, and I look over, and he ducking does it again. I don't know what he gave her. At this point, I'm seeing red. How dare you come into my house and continually disrespect me? It's not like it's just me. Sarah has gone through this previously on other nights we hosted. I simply walked over to the table and said, I guess that concludes Christmas Eve. Have a good night. Everyone's jaw hit the floor. We hadn't done presents yet or dessert, yada, yada, yada. I explained that I told him twice tonight. I felt disrespected multiple times. Sarah is pissed at me because I made that decision without talking to her. I admit I was an a-hole, but I have seen her mom and stepdad walk all over her before, and we had discussed this very dog feeding issue after previous dinners. She doesn't stand up to them, and it's always next time. I also have to admit it isn't just the dog feeding issue. I had to hear this out-of-touch man talk an outdated view of the world. 
poor people should just get better jobs, and a bunch of quasi R comments. I told Jane she could stay, but she wasn't going to take sides against her husband and they drove together. When I saw it was three against one, I just retired for the night. Sarah didn't talk to me until Christmas morning. I had embarrassed her in front of her family. I should have kept the peace until another time. He's an old man and forgets. Also, her brother and sister-in-law allow their dogs to get scraps. I stopped her and told her I reminded him twice that night and about the smirk and how he waited for the third time for my back to be turned. I also told her how awful it is to have dinner at her brother's house because their giant dogs have their head in your lap, slobbering on you. It's gross. She understood better, but still thought I should have consulted her and waited until it wasn't a holiday. Since they had plans with us, they would have nowhere to go. It wasn't a big deal, and I went nuclear. Not the a-hole. I do think you should have consulted with your wife first, but putting your beloved dog at risk and not respecting you or your house is not acceptable. Not the a-hole. In-laws for the disrespectful jerk he was, and mother-in-law for hearing OP complain and not telling husband to stop it. Therefore, she's complicit. Wife for not backing up her husband. I disagree that he had to talk to her. Because he did, the previous times, and she had said next time, which happened to be Christmas Eve. Not the a-hole. Okay, you should have talked to your wife. That part is not good. But you were clear, twice that night, and several times earlier. Seventy is not that old, and you did not mention early dementia or something. People might be pissed at you. Let them. It's your house and pet.